Hello everyone, welcome back. And today we are going to be making bouncing enemies in Make Code Arcade. Um, so as you can see, we can either have them bouncing between two walls like this, or we can have them bouncing freely between two points that you set. Um, so if we hop over to our code here, all I have set up is just a background, and I've made just two platforms here, one with no walls and one with walls. And the code that we make will be the same for both. Um, so I'll show you how we do that. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is make a placeholder tile for our enemy. So if I go into the tile maybe editor and click my tiles and create a tile, I'm just going to fill it in with red, but you can pick whatever color you want. This is just going to be so we can have somewhere for the game to know where to put our enemies. So I'm just going to put one, just one on each platform and press on done. Um, so now you'll see on our game when it refreshes, we've got these red tiles and that's where our enemies are going to spawn in. Now, if I hop down into the advanced section and click on functions, make a function and I'm going to call it bouncing enemies. Click done. And now a very important step, make sure you go back into functions and drag this call bouncing enemies into wherever you want it to be activated. <clears throat> so for this example game, I'll put it in just my on start block. But if you, for example, had a game with multiple levels, you'd put this in your changing level function. Now in our bouncing enemies function, we're going to go into loops and drag out this for value of list, drop that in, and in the list part here, we're going to scene, scroll right down to the bottom, and we'll grab this array of all locations. <clears throat> and here we'll select our placeholder tile that we made. So what this will do is it will repeat this code in here each of the red locations. So if we had 10 red locations or just one red location, it would do the exact same thing, just for each red location. <coughs> Sorry. Now we're going to sprite and we're going to create our enemy. So if you drag this set my sprite. Now click on this one and I already have it made because I tested it before, but just I'll make a new variable and we'll call it enemy. Oh. Call yours my enemy. I already have it here. Just so it's different from the game's set kind. <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> and just select any sprite or draw your own. So I'm going to use the little ghost. And make sure you set the sprite's kind to enemy. So once you've set your sprite kind to enemy, we're going to go into scene and scroll down to this place my sprite on top of and then the tile map. Drop that in under that. Make sure this is my enemy instead of my sprite. And drag value from up the top in this green block here. Drag value down to where it says tile map. Next, go back into scene. So you'll see this places our little ghost on top of the red blocks. So now we want to get rid of the red blocks. So if we go down again and see this set blank at tile map, drag that in and drag value down to where it says tile map again. Now, if you're like me and so on your tile map, see I have transparent blocks anywhere so I can have my background seen through. If you instead have decorated it with more tiles, make sure you select that tile in here. But since my background is transparent, I'm just going to leave it blank. Um, so now that we have our enemies spawning in on this block and we've removed the red square, we want our enemies to walk in either the left or the right direction. So if we go into logic and grab this if else block, Drag that in. Now where it says true, we want to go into math 
scroll to the bottom and grab this percent chance one and we'll type 50 percent chance in there so it's a 50 percent chance that goes right and a 50 percent chance that goes left so to make it go right we're going to sprites scroll down to this set my sprite x and we'll drag that into the first block change my sprite to my enemy and change x to velocity x and here to move it right we'll change the number from 0 to 50. Um, you can play around with the speed here i quite like 50 thanks to there you go so you can see one of them moving there and in the other part the else we can right click on this block and duplicate it drag it in and we'll change the 50 to negative 50. so now when we load up our game they should pick a random direction to walk in you can see so every time i reload it they'll choose a direction and go that way but as you can see they get stuck on the walls right now so to fix that um this will make it so we can walk between two like two walls like this we can go into sprites scroll down to grab this switch block here so set my sprite and this is the one with the drop down and the switch drag that in the bottom change my sprite to my enemy turn the switch on and instead of auto destroy i want you to go into this and we can grab out bounce on wall it's right there there are a lot of other things in here so it's cool to play around with these um, but for now we only need bounce on wall so now you'll see our enemy bounces between these two walls um, you'll also notice that our bottom enemy is bouncing off the edges of the tile map because um, those are considered walls um, so maybe what i'll do is i will just remove the edges of this platform just so we can have a clearer view because we don't want it to be bounced off the edge so if you for now we'll be floating oh, it refreshes but we want it to just bounce on this platform. We don't want it to be going to the edges. So how can we do that? What if we have a platform like this where we don't have any walls? Um, this is where we will make a bouncing sprite, which will tell it to tell our enemy to switch direction. So what we do for that is we're going to our tile map, create a new tile again. So click on this plus here, here in the my tile section and just fill it in with any color and you can now put this on the edges of where you want it to bounce pink's a bit difficult to see but you can see here i've got pink here and pink here so it will now bounce between these two pink ones. so you can treat these like walls but our sprite like our player can still run through these without being bounced in a random direction so if you click on done so this will give us where our bouncing blocks will be so if we look at our tile map say we have a level looking like this maybe our sprite starts down here and you to jump along these platforms to get to the end here so for example in a level like this we could put enemies in these gaps because they would bounce between these walls but for platforms like this we can still put an enemy here but we'll need to put these bouncing platforms on the edges just so it will bounce between them just like this so if we were to make a game with enemies on each platform, we'd want bouncing pads on either side of our platforms that don't have walls on the edge. Whereas in these ones, we won't need these pink pads because they have the walls to bounce off of. So to code these pink pads, what we're going to do is make another block very similar to this one. Actually, we can duplicate this one. So if we right click on this for element of array. So make sure you right click on the green part and we'll drag this down here. Now you can delete this if block and change the bounce on wall to invisible. And then in the red part, we can change it to pink. So for all the pink locations, we want to set and then we'll make a new sprite called bounce pad 
well, maybe enemy bounce pad in case you have bounce pads for your players. So we'll call it enemy bounce pad. And we'll make sure we select it in all of these ones. So what we're doing is we're making an enemy bounce pad sprite. We're placing it on top of value. So that's um, our pink locations. We're setting it to transparent at those pink locations. And we're making them invisible. And what invisible does is it means your game can still interact with them. So you can still bump into them and that sort of thing. But you can't see them. And now up here, we want to change enemy to, and we'll make a new kind called enemy bounce. Click on OK. And in this sprite section, um, I'll just get rid of the sprite here. We won't need him. Um, make sure your size down the bottom left here is 16 by 16. It should be that by default, but just because it had a little ghost, it's a bit bigger. And now I want you to just get any color, doesn't matter which one. Um, and I want you to just draw a big line down the middle. It doesn't matter how big, just as long as it's wide enough for a sprite to bump into it. There you go, I've drawn a big line down the middle of our tile. So now, if I turn the invisible off, we'll see that we have these little lines, and this is what our little sprite down the bottom is going to bump into to make him go back the other direction. So I'll turn the invisible back on. And our last step is just to make him turn around when he hits these invisible pink pads. So if we go into sprites, scroll down to get this sprite of kind overlaps another sprite. We'll drag that out, put it at the bottom. We'll change player to enemy. Oh, sorry, enemy. And the other player to bounce. And then we want to go to sprites and grab this set sprite X. And where it says my sprite, we're going to drag sprite in from up the top. We'll put that in there. And we'll change X to velocity X. And now where it says zero, we're going to math, drag in this zero times zero one. And then in the first zero, if we go into sprites, we can grab this my sprite x, it's a little round shaped one. Put it in the first zero, and we'll drag sprite in where it says my sprite again, like that. And for the x, make it velocity x as well. And then we want to multiply that by negative one. So now if we look at our code, we have our two enemies bouncing back and forth. So our bottom one is bouncing along freely on its platform, whereas our top one is bouncing between walls. And if we changed our code, maybe we wanted to change it and we put, um, maybe we put a wall in Maybe I decided to put a wall here instead. Oops. And remove that. So maybe I had, if it reloads. Oh, is it gonna reload? Oh, huh, I guess not. Um, well, if it did work, imagine it, your sprite would bounce between the bounce pad on the edge and the wall because it can bounce off both and it doesn't matter which one it touches. Either or works. Um, maybe that would do the trick. There we go. So see our sprite can bounce between a wall and our bounce pad that we made. So if you make this block of code here and this one down the bottom, um, it means that just make, when you make a tile map, all you have to do is make either walls for it to bounce off, and if there's no wall, you can put in one of these bounce pads, which is just acts as a wall for the sprite, but not for you. There we are, so that's how you make bouncing enemies. Um, for other videos that I recommend watching after this, we have one called um, Defeating Enemies by Landing on Their Head, which is sort of like a Goomba in Mario, when you land on top of his head and it explodes so um this is a fun way to defeat the bouncing enemies so 
feel free to look into that next, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.